Hello everyone and welcome to my message. My name is Andre and today we will be talking about the scarlet worm. Before we get into that, we have we first have to have a look at a very special psalm called Psalm 22. It is a prophetic psalm telling about the suffering of Jesus. How do we know this? Well, let's take a look. Well, now that you have a look, this definitely is about Jesus, isn't it? Today's message revolves around one very strange verse in this psalm. Psalm 22 verse 6. But I am a worm and not a man, scorned by men and despised by the people. Since written from the point of view of Jesus, did he really say that? What do you think this means? We may think of this worm Jesus calls himself as an earthworm or a centipede, but the word for worm in Hebrew is rima, and that is not the word that is used here. The word that is used here in the Hebrew text is tola. This word is used 48 times in the Old Testament, and its meaning is worm, scarlet, or crimson. Sometimes it could just mean the color, or other times it could mean a red worm. This worm is called the crimson worm or Coccus ilicis and is common in Israel and many parts of the Middle East and Europe. They are about the size of a pea and many times are confused as being part of a plant. It does not act as a regular worm. In fact, it is more of an insect. The male has wings and flies around and the female looks more like a maggot and cannot fly. These are some more images of the Coccus ilicis. The Coccus ilicis is a special bug because of many reasons. Since ancient times, this bug has been used to make dye. Marie Antoinette wore bags and velvet made with dye from this worm. During the Roman Empire, Spain had to pay tribute to Rome in the form of Coccus ilicis that live on the Kermes oak. The unfortunate insect was squeezed in the thousands to produce a crimson dye, the most highly prized dye for the robes of Senate members. This dye is also added to food products, lipstick, and many other things in the form of a chemical called E120. If you see the score at the back of your food, you'll know that the food was colored with the Tola bug. These are some famous places in the Bible that we all know where the word tola is used. If you would like some more references, this link will be posted in the description. Why would Jesus say that he was a crimson worm? Well, let's look at the life cycle of the female crimson worm when she is ready to lay her eggs, which it does only once in its life. She attaches herself to a tree or a branch. She attaches herself so strongly that she is unable to detach herself. While doing so, she makes a hard shield to protect the little egg she lays under herself. When the larvae hatch, they live protected under her body and feed themselves with their living mother. When the scarlet worms are able to look after themselves in a few days, the mother dies. A scarlet red liquid leaks out at that moment. which colors not only the wood which they are attached to but the little worms as well for the rest of their lives four days after the death of the mother her body loses its scarlet red color and changes into a kind of white wax which falls to the ground like snow 
God has put this illustration in nature from creation with this worm of the sacrifice that Jesus would make for mankind. King David described the reason why Jesus is described and the manner which he was to die in Psalm 22, a thousand years before the birth of Jesus. The worm attaches itself to the wood in order to die there. Jesus died on a wooden cross to which he had voluntarily allowed himself to be nailed. The worm attaches itself into the wood in order to bring forth new life. Jesus allowed himself to be crucified because that was the only way to bring eternal redemption for sin. Jesus died on the cross. The worm protects her offspring. Jesus said in his prayer, While I was with them, I protected them and kept them safe by that name you gave me. The larvae grow by eating their living mother. Jesus said, I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. This bread is my flesh which I give for the world. The larvae are permanently stained scarlet by the death of their mother and the scarlet dye strains the tree of or wood as well. The scarlet red color is the color of blood, blood in which God confirms as a covenant as in the time of Moses. This is the blood of the covenant that the Lord has made with you. Jesus indicated the cup of wine during the Passover meal with his disciples when he said, This is my blood of the covenant which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. Once we have accepted Jesus, his blood buys us and colors us just like the mother Tola colors its children. After the baby Tolas have been colored, they can never remove the color. In the same way, once we have been washed with the blood of Jesus, we are his own, we are his children. The Caucasus illicis also has thorn-like edges attached to the top of its head, just like how Jesus had a crown of thorns. Literature about the Cochlus illicis says that on the morning of the fourth day after her death, the body of the worm turns into snow-white jelly that looks like a fluff of white wool and falls to the ground. The change point direct points directly to Isaiah's prophecy. Though your sins are like scarlet, they shall be white as snow. They are as, though they are as red as crimson, they shall be like wool. The Hebrew word for the scarlet is not the word for the color scarlet, but for the worm, as in Psalm 22.6. Now seen replacing the words. Though your sins are like scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they are as red as the worm, they shall be like wool. So when we read Psalm 22, 6, I am but a worm, Jesus was pointing us to the scarlet worm, a worm not like an earthworm or a maggot, but a worm that sacrifices itself for its children, a worm that colors its young, permanently scarlet. He was pointing us to his sacrifice and the power of his blood and all it can do, how it can save, cleanse and forgive, and most of all, just how much it proves. For God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. John 3.16 Thank you.